y'all it's heel heat time hi everybody and welcome to heel heat my name is george Coles, and this is our tna show for the week first off we're going to start off in the so-so segments the stuff that wasn't good wasn't bad it was just there uh we start off with the opening segment of the night kurt angle coming in the ring calling out willow and then asking willow if jeff hardy could come out and play basically Angle I like, Willow the character is so dumb, I wish it would just go away. Maybe this is a way for them to transition it back to him just being Jeff Hardy. I hope so, but it's made for a kind of meh segment to open the show with. Next up, the uh, segment with Bobby Roode, MVP, Kenny King attacking when Bobby Roode's trying to get to MVP which leads to Eric Young coming out to even the score, which leads to Lashley coming out to give the bad guys the advantage again. The reason it falls in here is because I feel like every time I watch this, I'm, in, I'm on Groundhog's Day, because like deja vu over and over again with, with, with this segment and these same players doing the same thing. It's kind of redundant, repetitive. Give us new ways for these guys to meet up. Um, I quite like the Bobby Roode, Ken Kenny King street fight. I believe it was either last week or the week before. You know, just give us something more that doesn't feel like okay. It's part of the formula. We're going to start to show up with an interview. We're going to have uh, bad guys outnumber the good guys beat down here and that's the reason I, I was like you know okay I don't, that's the reason why I didn't particularly care for this it's just another cliche that we have on the show now coming off of that we're going to go into our bad portion of the night luckily there was only one thing that fell into the bad portion and that was a four-way knockouts match Madison Rain versus Brittany versus Angelina Love versus Gail King. Now normally, as you guys all know, I'm a proponent for the knockouts in women's wrestling in general. I see, I quite enjoy it. However, this became over, an overbooked clusterfuck and really just took away from the action in the ring, in my opinion. Uh, too many wrestlers, not enough time. Fatal four ways or four ways or whatever the fuck you want to call them, kind of. It doesn't give quite the shine that a, a three way or even a conventional one on one match would do. The only thing it's good for is the action keeps pretty solid. However, saying that, that leads to a lot of train wreck moments, a lot of botches, a lot of people going where they're not supposed to go. And to me, this just didn't connect, even with. Gail Kim picks up the win on it, but just a weirdly out of place match and a one on one match with any of the three and Gail Kim would have been better th than this in my opinion. Next up, we're going to go to our question of the week from last week. The question was, who do you think is the greatest ref of, referee of all time? Got some answers from our friends, first from Zombies40. Earl, without a doubt, I can honestly recall, I can, I honestly can't recall other refs that are as known or were, were the most notorious angle in wrestling history like Earl was. Earl referring to Earl Hebner, of course. Next is from uh, Jay Baker, 1138. I'd have to say that Earl Hebner would be the best ref ever, simply because of the fact that when I think of referees, he's the first one that comes to mind. I'd like to disagree with you guys, but I think Earl Hebner's right up there. He's If he's not the best, he's one of the very short, one of the few on the short list. Uh, a couple others I'd like to mention, though. 
would be Charles Robinson and Jimmy Corderas. Charles Robinson had a couple of little weird angles, like the little Nature Boy angle in WCW. But all in all, has been a solid ref. Jimmy Cordera is a guy that really you hadn't heard much bad or good about, and mostly that's what a ref should be. They should just be just there and not part of the action. Now we do see sometimes that they're involved in the angle. Obviously, Earl Hebner, guys like Tim White, guys like um, Rudy Charles have been involved in the, in the action in the past. Like I said, with Little Nature Boy, he was part of an angle. So I, I understand that they are used at times, but Jimmy Cordero is just a solid guy that, you know, I think doesn't quite get the credit he deserves. Earl Hammer, I think, is the best, but just to give them guys a shout out as well. Now, coming off of that, we're going to go into the question week for this week. The question is, and this is kind of be, going to bring you back into a time machine. Get in the DeLorean, hit it up to 88 miles an hour, and we're going to figure out, or we're going to ask you, what wrestler is the one that made you love wrestling and become a fan? Who did you become a fan to watch? Whether it was in the Attitude Era or with one of the big guys like Austin Rock, Triple H, if you were a WCW fan because of Sting or Ric Flair or Vader, if you go back further, like you were a Hulkamaniac, or even further than that, you leave, believed in Nick Bockwinkel or Bruno or San Martino, or you just started watching wrestling because guys like Samoa Joe or Bob, Bobby Roode or Randy Orton were some of the newer crop, let us know what you think. Let us know what the, what the wrestler that brought you into watching wrestling as appointment viewing is. Uh, let us know what you think. Hit us up on Facebook. Hit us up on Twitter. Put it down where? Down there in the comments. And while you're at it, hit the like button and share button as well. Get our get the word out there for us on Heel Heat so we can get more followers and more views, please. Now coming off of that, we're going to go into our good segment of the week. First thing I want to mention is the team of Magnus and Bram versus the Wolves. I thought this was a very good match. I thought this was a solid way to show Magnus and Brand as serious contenders to the Wolves this quickly into their career. I thought both teams worked with each other very well. I like the dichotomy of two bruisers going up against two technical marvels. I think it worked very well. I think they mixed together. I think it goes together like peanut butter and chocolate. I'd love to see a longer form match with these two, two teams, I think. We're only scratching the surface of what Magnus and Brand could be as a team, and we already know how good the Wolves can be as a team. But a great tag match either way. Coming off of that, we're going to go into my favorite match of the night for the X Division title, Sonata defending against Austin Aries. A lot of build up before the show about is he going to do the option C, which we all know Austin Aries created to cash in the X Division title for a world title shot. A really good match, a really solid match. Aries does pick up the win. Um, Sonata proves to be a very hard opponent for him. I think this is this is the one of the even in a loss. I think this is going to be one of those. When we look back at three or four years, one of those star-making moments for Sonata that he could ha hang and have a great match with a guy like Austin Aries, I think this is really going to help him further in the way the fans perceive him, including myself. Coming off of that, we had the, the segment with Bully Ray calling out Rhino, which Rhino brings out Ethan Carter III and Rockstar Spud. Bully Ray wants to know why one of his good friends has turned on him. Uh, Rhino says it's because he's a narcissist. He He's a user. He uses people. They get into a little bit. The three uh, three people attack Bully, which brings out Tommy Dreamer from the crowd with a kendo stick, chasing off the bad guys. Now, you're going to ask me why I thought the so-so segment with Rude and MVP's group and Eric Young, but I thought this was good. Very simple. This is early on 
in the rivalry between Bully Ray and Rhino. You're tying Bully Ray and Dreamer in together as two people we know are good friends against the common enemy. You're giving us a little explanation as why Rhino and Bully Ray are fighting. So to me, this is a feud builder instead of a placeholder, if you understand what I'm saying. The first thing, the, the Rude and Eric Young versus MVP's crew, that felt like just like, all right, we got to do something to keep them on TV. This felt more of, we're going to explain why these guys are fighting, if you follow on. And last but not least, the Battle Royal for a number one contender match. Thought it was a solid Battle Royal. Thought it a lot of fun little spots. Jeff Hardy picks up the win. A good way to end the show and a good way to give us a new contender for the world title. I thought it's uh, without giving someone that's feuding with them a title shot. I thought it was a cool way to do it. We're going to see next week Jeff Hardy versus Bobby Lashley for the world title. So I thought it was cool. I enjoyed it. I thought it was a good Battle Royal. Like I said, a lot of fun little spots on the show, on the Battle Royal itself. But coming off of that, we're going to go right into our ratings. Now, if you've seen the show before, or even if you haven't, you know we have we have a 1 to 5 scale. 1 being the worst, 5 being the best. 1's a Dixie Carter, 2's a Rockstar Spud, 3 is a Gunner, 4 is a James Storm, 5 is a Bobby Reed. And we do the show a solid three and Gunner. Honestly, there was a lot of just mediocrity. The the four way match was pretty bad. Uh, the two segments I mentioned in the so so portion were very mediocre and lost lost a lot of my interest. The only thing saved them from being bad was certain people being in it. The good matches were good. Um, as much as I praise the Battle Royal for being a good thing, it was what it was. It's a Battle Royal. It's not a one-on-one -on -one competition. It's not a Battle Royal is never going to win a five-star match. Yeah, they could be fun. Yeah, they could be exciting. Yeah, they could be cool. But would I rather have seen, I don't know, just to throw out two people that were in there, Jeff Hardy versus... Robbie E. Or not Robbie, I'm sorry, he wasn't in there. Jesse Goddard. Jeff Hardy versus Jesse Goddard in a, a competitive number one co contender match. Probably would have been better than the Battle Royal, even though I did like the Battle Royal, if you understand the logic. But anyway, basically, it's a very middle of the road show. I gave it a three of James Storm. And basically, that's all I have to say about that. My name is George Coles, and this has been another episode of Heal Heat.